everyone and welcome to our lesson study online. Our Father in heaven this evening, we thank you for this precious moment you have given us to dig into your word. By the administration of your spirit, help us that we may identify Adventist cultures that would be of help to do away with sinful culture in our world. Thank you for your presence and for answering our prayer. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, our lesson title is Culture, Tuesday, April 21. In the previous studies, Sunday, we talk about our tradition. Last night, we talk about experience. And tonight, we will talk about culture, how this variable influences us and how it affects the way we look at the scriptures. The passage provided for us tonight is found in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 17. I'm reading from English Standard Version. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father but is from the world. And the world world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. I'd like to underscore the phrase for all that is in the world. This phrase does not refer to everything here on earth. It refers only to the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are the qualifiers of the word world. All in this world refers only to the sinful culture. Now, I like to use that term because like tradition and like experience, culture has also two sides, the good culture and the bad culture. Culture. The bad culture, I would call it sinful culture. Everything in this world was created by God and He loves our world. But because of sin, there are things now that exist in this world which are bad or sinful. And we will look into this and how this sinful culture can be overcome by Christians who are waiting for the coming of Christ. Allow me to explain this topic culture from the perspective of psychology and also using a theory that would help us understand how we interact with culture and how culture influences us, okay? And I'm using and borrowing the theory of Albert Bandura, 1986. Actually, the original is in the 1960s. He called it the social learning theory. And in 1986, he modified it by calling it social cognitive theory. I will not explain everything in this theory, but I like to use only the concept of what he calls as reciprocal determination. When he says reciprocal determination, it is illustrated in the arrows there. You say, the center, the inverted triangle with personality there, according to this personality theory of Albert Bandura, the person interacts with the environment, with the culture, and the culture influences or the environmental factors influences the person. So according to our study guide, we are a product of our own culture. The Bible was written in its own culture. The writers of the Bible have their own cultures. But our lesson is telling us that biblical cultures transcends all other cultures. It transforms other cultures and it corrects other cultures. That's the beauty there. So in this theory, the person, whoever you are, is influenced by our culture. In fact, we are a product of our own culture. We are a product of our environment. And according to the story, we have this reciprocal determinism. We are influenced by our culture, but we are also influencing our culture. So a good example of that is that in our environment, we have the COVID-19. We are influenced by COVID-19, and then we also influence COVID-19. We do many things to fight against COVID-19. So you see there the reciprocal determinism. The person also 
also have reciprocal uh, dynamics there with behaviors that influence the person, his past, his present, and what he has learned in the past. Influences his personality. You have there also the yellow triangle personal characteristics, which includes the thoughts, the traditions, the beliefs. See, so all our beliefs, religious beliefs, are under personal characteristics. According to this theory, these personal characteristics, including beliefs, influences the person. But the person also influences these personal characteristics, you see. So there is that reciprocal determination. There is dynamic there that interacts behavior, personal characteristics, and the environment or the culture. According to Albert Bandura, when a person faces stimulus from the environment, for example, beautiful lady, okay, stimulus, or you may call it a temptation, whatever we see, like the pride of life, okay, beautiful homes, beautiful cars, anything that we see around, okay, passes through a major process, a mental event that we give interest in our study tonight. So when we see something that attracts us, the last of the eyes, it catches our attention. See, business psychologists are very good in it, in getting our attention, especially in ads, in television, you see. So the first stage of mental event process, he calls it attention. It gets our attention. And then it goes to a process, mental process called retention. It is retained it's stored in the memory. And then the pre-stimulus that is now retained in the memory is reproduced, is put into actions that can be done right after he receives the stimulus or maybe later on in the future. What is important is that the stimulus is retained in the memory. This can be reproduced later on. And that's what he calls motivation, okay? The will to do it. So this is the danger here in the mental process. The pride of life, the last of the eyes and the last of the flesh can get our attention, okay? And that can be retained in our memory. And later on, that becomes a behavior. Now we go into bad behaviors, compare it with a good behavior or good culture. So bad culture and then good culture. And how do we solve these uh, problems that we face in our world? Allow me to use again a research paradigm to explain these things, okay? Uh, it, it would help us understand better by using also a definition of culture that I will use here. You see, the word culture is very broad. We cannot exhaust everything, but I have chosen a definition from dictionary in my computer. Culture, the attitudes and behavior characteristic of a particular social group. <clears throat> so, culture in this definition, in our study, in our emphasis tonight, refers to the attitudes, set of beliefs, and behavior characteristic of a particular social group. And that social group, I'd like to identify now as the Adventist group. We Adventists have our own culture. And I'd like to emphasize this culture. And I borrowed this from Dr. Jane Tyer, 1999, The Christian Spiritual Participation Profile, A Measure of Participation in Ten Spiritual Discipline. Just a short background of this instrument, Dr. Tyer is a professor of the Andrews University University. She developed this one and standardized this one, taken from 28 fundamental doctrines with 50 specific behaviors. She ran it through statistical uh, analysis and came up with 10 disciplines. These 10 disciplines, you notice Adventist behaviors, all our activities and lifestyle revolve around these 10 disciplines that I would call as behaviors or our culture. It is very easy to understand culture in terms of behavior. And behavior is measurable. According to uh, Dr. Tyre, there are 10 specific disciplines of Adventists where our life revolves and we can call this Adventist culture. So that one is actually the independent variable. The other side, you have there the sinful culture identified in our text as the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The statements themselves reveal they are really a problem. Okay, From the research perspective, the dependent variable must be proven to be a problem. So the last of the flesh is a problem in America, in Australia, in Canada, in Asia, anywhere in the world, so long as you are sinful 
full human being, you face the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. Anything that we see that attract us and deprave our nature is a problem. The pride of life, anything that we intend in honor or see, these things like houses, you see, cars, property, everything that can be a source of pride of life. These three actually cannot exist in the presence of God. And the Bible condemns this. That's why we just zeroed into these three. Other things in the world are good things, good culture. Now, how can this be solved, this sinful culture? The Bible provides that we avoid these things. And we can also confront these things, okay? Using this is the a culture. Number one is prayer. We don't have the power over the flesh in the eyes in the pride of life. If God will not help us, and of course we can do that by specific behavior like praying. So prayer can be of help. Prayer is power. We can overcome the lust of the flesh, eyes, and pride of life by prayer. And if ever we are tempted, then we repent. We turn away from it. Worship is another behavior, another discipline that would help us strengthen our relationship with God and overcome this temptation. Meditation. Examine of conscience. We see to it that our conscience clean, then Bible reading is very important component or behavior that would help us overcome this sinful culture. Evangelism is an advanced discipline where we share the Bible to other people. Another uh, variable there or culture is fellowship. And today our fellowship is virtual through internet because it is against social distancing policy. Uh, we hope we can have our fellowship as soon as possible. I miss the church now. Fellowship would help us develop a Christian culture that promotes Christian principles. And then number nine is service that includes community service. We grow so much in our relationship with God through fellowship, worship, evangelism, Bible reading, and all these things. And the last is stewardship that includes our health, that includes food, clothing, shelter, everything there that has been entrusted to us, including money, tithes, and offerings, all there in the world's stewardship. So you see that all our behaviors, all our styles revolve around these 10 disciplines. It's the a culture can be a source of activities that can overcome the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life with the mediation of God. These are powerless without the help of God. Paul said, I can do all things by the help of God who strengthens us. But there are specific behaviors that we can do and God can use these behaviors, our culture, our attitudes to overcome the world. Okay, let us reflect by using the scale here. I ask this question, how intentional are you with our Adventist culture, the boxes there, so we can do away with the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Prayer, okay? How intentional are you with your prayer? Never, very rarely, rarely, occasionally, frequently, and very frequently. Repentance, worship, use the scale to evaluate yourself. Prayer, repentance, worship, meditation, conscience, fellowship, Bible reading. Our goal is to have higher frequency of these activities because that would promote spiritual growth and that would promote strength that we can use in times like this. Our Father in heaven, thank you for inspiration, for giving us the wisdom to understand that not everything here on earth are bad. Only the sinful behaviors, the attractions that would deprive us, that by the help of your spirit, we can promote this Adventist culture to our fellow men. That they too may enjoy holy experience using these eight disciplines. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up the trumpet and loud let it ring.